All right. Uh, we have also Churchill Suba. Churchill was in the meeting, weren't you? Yes, I was at the meeting. I see. And, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I was privileged uh, to, to be tasked to read the resolutions that um, resolved to um, have um, the discussions go on hand in hand with the uh, mass action related activities. Uh, not necessarily protests, but protests are among them. Um, for the reason that um, reading the mood of the meeting, you'd, you get a sense that um, when the president addressed the country, I think on 2nd of April, uh, to which the Azimio side later responded, um, you saw in his body language the kind of humility that was required. Um, to bring in some throwing of the hostilities that had prevailed. Um, he was accompanied by his deputy, uh, but one who later spoke as if uh, he did not show up at the State House uh, uh, President's address, almost in his pyjama, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, casually, I think he was, he was doing his own thing, some exercise. He had promised to do so to, to check on his weight, um, which is nothing wrong because it was on a, a weekend day. Um, but then came the day for the selection of their steam, and you saw the, you know, the, the leader of majority in the National Assembly you know, speak with his fangs out as if you know, um, they were torpedoing <laughs> their own boss. I mean... If your boss speaks with such, you know, humility, and, and for the first time, I think, um, since the elections were concluded, uh, the president repeatedly referred to the Azimio uh, Supremo as, as, as my brother, uh, my friend. They were, those were the references. Only for one to later on see, um, you know, people who um, were appearing to have been set up like, you know, dogs, you know, German shepherds uh, on the process. And so, um, whereas Azimio and, 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 and the civil society say yes, whenever there is a gesture for dialogue, it's always good for the other side to embrace it. But there already seems to be so many conditions being set uh, around the talks, including on the subject matter. But I think what has angered the Azimio side is um, the fact that uh, uh, one of the complaints, and in fact the fourth one, that uh, the Azimio raised was this banditry that is going on, uh, not just in the North Rift, but in the political circles, where the ruling coalition raids opposition parties for more MPs, and then uh, only to appoint some of them into, <laughs> into the small team of uh, those to be in the negotiating team. Um, and, and, and that, I think... Um, is, is what seems to have angered them uh, and, and demonstrated beyond reasonable doubt that um, um, the other side of government uh, does not seem to be uh, genuine in their call for a truce, in their call for dialogue, because when you call for dialogue, you go, the agenda setters are on the other side. And you say, we have been hearing you say this, but you don't limit what you want to be talked about, yet, you know, you know very well that, you know, these are the same issues on which, for, on which Kenyans went to the street. So, so I, I would blame the government side for, you know, the turn of events because um, they seem even before the talk start um, not to be serious about engaging the opposition on, on, on very, very legitimate concerns that have been raised. I've always asked why, uh, you know, it has been made to look as if the opposition is extracting anyone's tooth without the benefit of an aesthetics. Uh, yet, you know, uh, Article 35 of the Constitution uh, guarantees every Kenyan, every person, not just Raila Odinga, not anybody at the top leadership of Azimio, the right to access information held by the state or its agents and that is required to protect a right. Now, the right that is being protected here is in the Bill of Rights, Article 38, on the right to free, fair, and regular elections based on universal suffrage. Now, that's the right. And you remember that at some point, uh, the DCI, on its own motion, initiated, you know, investigations into allegations that have been made by Azimio, 
one would have thought that by this time round, the DCI would be giving us an update on how far he has gone with the investigations. But why has he gone mute? Because in order to verify what the allegations that the Azimio side have made, they have to open the server. So somebody must have told him, stop it. <laughs> because now you seem to be working for the Azimio side. So what is it so difficult? Uh, why is it so difficult for uh, the government? And, and every time, we have never had a response from the IBC, by the way, on this. Uh, not even from the CEO. There may be no commissioners, but the secretariat has the capacity it's to say exactly uh, this is the server. But the response you get is from the president, is from the deputy, is from the majority leader that they have no key to the server. Nobody has asked them to open the server. The server is in the custody. I heard of, the minority of the leader saying that uh, we have Venezuelans here in the country. Uh, and, doctoring, uh, doctoring with what is in the server uh, right now. So, what are you doing as a remedial measure since you have this information? I'm not saying you that as part. Maybe <laughs> this will be directed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the part the, the civil society. Yeah. But, the, the but, ci but the civil society also they've come up with a report that uh, we've been teasing out here yes. on uh, on still the electoral integrity itself. Uh, I, I, you can tell us more about. Um, uh, the Gladwell Otelo, Otenos organization, that is AFRICOG, and uh, yeah, if you're privy to this particular information, how then does it really strengthen the case of Azimio with uh, the electoral integrity, briefly? Yes, of course it, it does. You see, when there are all these allegations, during elections, uh, civil society has over the years um, participated in very robust uh, monitoring and observation of the electoral process. And that's why every time there's been an, a petition, you remember right from 2013, um, the petitioners were not just the opposition. Uh, those cases were consolidated after, you know, AFRICOG and a number of other organizations, you know, and ads, you know, produced the evidence they had and were lucky to have also, you know, filed their own petition. And, and so it always happens and that's partly why, you know, uh, the ruling coalitions or, or parties have always been, you know, against the civil society because there's always this body of evidence that civil society always brings on board. And so if you added what, you know, these other groups are saying, uh, then it really strengthens um, the evidence base uh, that Azimio has to claim that indeed, you know, there were massive irregularities in some instances based on what we were shown yesterday. Um, on the on, on the infringements on the on the tabulations, uh, you know it is a matter of taking 100 votes here and adding 100 votes there. It may look insignificant, but when it is taken from so many uh, polling stations and given the uh, almost you know uh, near insignificant margin with which you know William Ruto is said to have defeated you know the Azimio candidate, then you could see why the math does not add up. Right. Let me just uh, circle back to. Uh, Dr. Green here and ask you, you see now they're saying we'll run